And joining me now with reaction is Elisha Wiesel, the son of Elie Wiesel, who survived the Holocaust in Auschwitz and was a Nobel Peace Prize winning laureate. This uh, piece really is about fear at the end of the day and what's going on for Jewish Americans. What did you see in what these young women were saying? First of all, thank you for having me back on the show, Abby. I'd say the fear is justified. Uh, earlier today, we learned that an elderly California man uh, at a rally was killed, unfortunately. He had a megaphone smashed in his face by an anti-Israel protester. He fell to the ground and died. Um, so this is a real threat when you look at the anti-Semitism that is showing its face now in this country. So I understand it. My shul has security. My synagogue has security. Um, but I think that we are in a much broader battle as well. The Jewish people, once again, is being put on trial for a war that we didn't start. And in that war, we have to arm ourselves with the truth that Israel didn't start the war. We have to arm ourselves with allies, and thank God there have been so many, including President Biden. And we have to arm ourselves with legal remedies. And that's why I think one of the most significant developments today was the ADL and the Brandeis Center and Hillel all announcing that there is a new website, legal-protection.org, for any students or faculty on college campuses where they feel that indoctrinating lies are being spread uh, in anti-Semitism. We want to continue that conversation. Uh, Elisha, stay with me. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, what you're talking about on college campuses, but also I want to ask you about Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib's claim that Israel is committing genocide against Palestinians. We're back with Elisha Wiesel, who just penned an op-ed. My father, Eli Wiesel, survived Auschwitz. He'd ask these questions about Israel-Hamas war. Now, Alicia, you're seeing this conflict really tearing apart college campuses. You say that a lot of these students who are rallying against Israel are missing critical facts. What are they in your mind? Yeah, and I want to say, students who have that position, I don't see these people as evil. I just see them as misinformed. Um, they're, they're spreading very dangerous lies which have their roots in the blood libel, the accusation against the Jewish people that we are attacking innocents, whether it's Christian babies in the Middle Ages or Gazan civilians right now. And the key facts are Israel withdrew from Gaza. It took every last soldier. It uprooted 9,000 settlers out of the surrounding area so that we could discover what will the civilization become in those several square miles that are the Gaza Strip. And soon enough, Hamas was given a, um, a strong majority. They staged a coup, ejected the PA, and effectively this was a government that was created to attack Israel and destroy the Jewish people. Can I just uh, focus in a little bit about what you're just talking about? One of the things that you hear from pro-Palestinians, including Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, is that Israel is committing a genocide against Palestinians. They're talking about the bombings that have killed more than 10,000 Palestinians. When you hear the word genocide used in that context, what does it bring up for you? Listen, genocide is a very specific word that was really, it was a term that was created in the wake of the Holocaust. And the idea is, in order for it to be genocide, there has to be intent for genocide. You have to desire the extinction of the other people. If you look at the founding documents of the State of Israel and compare them to the founding documents, the Hamas Charter, you will discover that one of them is genocidal and the other extends its hands to all of the surrounding neighbors. Israel, from the very beginning, wanted peace with its neighbors, was ready to accept a Palestinian state, and called for coexistence. Today, it has a 20% Israeli Arab population. The Hamas Charter calls for the extinction of the Jewish people and Israel, that is genocide. I want to be just clear that, I, I mean, there are obviously people who have uh, a lot of issues with how Israel has treated Palestinians. You say that that is separate from the kind of language that's being used in this context about this conflict. Listen, gen, you know, words like genocide, if you throw them around so loosely, um, it's, it's devastating. It's, it's a very serious form of attack. All right. Alicia Wiesel, thank you so much for joining us as always. We appreciate thank your you, 